Yeah, 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 he's my house. You do it here, this man doesn't want to leave quietly. Sheriff Kev McNally feels he needs to be removed from the building, but it soon turns into a standoff. My keys, my keys, my keys, my keys, my keys. My keys. No, no, no. The sheriffs will lift the man clean out of the building. The best way of keeping Lawrence and Kev's team and the squatters safe seems to be removing him. You always get one, don't you? It was gobby. He's mouthing off a little bit. I sent it back to Keith. Not really sure what it was. But anyway, I kept shouting, getting in my face a little bit, and it's only so much, you know, I don't have to, don't have to tolerate that. We're here to get everyone out. And once you start being, being like that, aggressive inside, then you got to go. And it looks like everything bar the kitchen sink will be joining him. No one left up in there. Outside, a team of technicians will secure the building, all at a great cost to the landlord but they will be hoping that squatters won't be able to get back in. It's all secure now. There's, a, there's now a mecha door on downstairs where we went in, and the contractors are still there, just they're now secured in the building, um, and they're going around doing some other bits and pieces for the client. All in all, um, yeah, another, another job done. Cup of coffee, off for a bit of breakfast. And the squatters haven't allowed the incident to dampen their spirits. Thank you, thank you. You don't know who I am. You don't know who you're messing with. But yeah, no one. Today, Sheriff Tommy Coyle is in Northampton looking for a home to go to. A mobile home, that is. He's here because of an unpaid debt after the sale of a recreational vehicle that has now led to a local company owing money to a former client. We're in Northampton and we're on our way to see an individual, a Mr Randall, for a large balance of 30,000. I'm just fingers crossed it's a trading address and obviously I'll be looking for motorhomes. Tommy is heading for a company known as Itchy Feet, who deal in luxury motorhomes. If he can't get cash payment, he's thinking there might well be goods to take control of. If there's a motorhome there in his name and, he, and, he, and he's totally unwilling to make any payment or, or even a, an agreement to pay, then unfortunately we could escalate it and, re, and remove there and then. Tommy is on his way to see the Itchy Feet Company. They owe the whopping £30,000 to former soldier Kev Robinson of Skegness. He used to be the proud owner of this top-of-the-range American mobile home, which he bought from Itchy Feet for £70,000. We uh, were on holiday. We had to look round Itchy Feet motorhomes and fell in love instantly. It had everything that we wanted. The big bed in the rear bedroom, the leather piece sofa, air suspension, power steering, power brakes, air brakes. Absolutely gorgeous. It was just like sitting in an armchair. The 8-litre vehicle was so big and powerful, Kev needed to have an HGV licence to drive it. But Kev had a heart scare less than a year later and felt it was unsafe for him to drive such a large motorhome. I had a, a, a bad night one night and it was thought that I had a heart attack and everything else. In the meantime, my licence, HGV licence, was up for renewal and um, because of the heart scare, I, I, I just handed my HG licence back so I couldn't drive the motor home. It, it broke my heart, really, because it, it, was, it, it was just a dream come true. Kev contacted Eric Randall from Itchy Feet, the company he originally bought the motor home from. They agreed to try and sell it on his behalf and take commission on the sale. So I agreed with Mr. Randall that I would get £60,000 for the motorhome. The Itchy Feet Company put it up for sale at £65,000. That figure included a £5,000 cut for Itchy Feet, 
Michael Randall, the son of the owner, dealt with Kevin. I checked the uh, website every week, uh, phone calls. In fact, um, they took it to a motorhome show and it was bought at a motorhome show. The vehicle was sold and the Itchy Feet company paid off over £30,000 of finance that Kevin still had left on the vehicle. Kev was expecting Itchy Feet to take their cut and give the rest to him. But as part of the deal, they took on another mobile home in part exchange. Eric Randall has sent me a bank transfer of £10,000. The remainder of the money, which would have been about £16,000, um, was still owed. And I was told that because there was a trade in part exchange against my motorhome, they would have to sell the part exchange motorhome before I could get the remaining money from them. Kev was confident he'd get the remaining money when the part exchange home was sold. And in time, it was. The part exchange motorhome was sold and I, I noticed on the website again the, the sale pending vehicle sold. So I phoned Michael uh, at Itchy Feet. Um, I was told then that yeah, they'd taken a European motorhome in part exchange and I won't get paid anything until they get rid of that motorhome. This was going on for 18 months now um, and I was getting very worried. Obviously this was putting financial strain on myself and my partner. She thought that I was being used, so it did drive a little bit of a wedge between us. With the remaining balance unpaid, Kev decided to take his case to court. Itchy feet attended, but the judge found in Kev's favour and he was awarded the remaining balance plus costs. A total of over £30,000. But even getting that turned into a battle and he had no choice but to call the sheriffs. Mr Randall's ignored every order from the court on any payment times. That's the only way forward now is the sheriffs. On the road in Northampton, Sheriff Tommy has located the Itchy Feet office. Yeah, well this looks like high value assets here, so let's go have a chat with Mr Randall. There you go, Itchy Feet. Tommy is itching to get inside. Hello there, is Mr Randall about? No, unfortunately he isn't. Could you get him on the phone? It's, I'm an enforcement agent. The situation is we're here with a High Court writ of control today to execute it, basically take control of goods in lieu of payment. The receptionist gets boss Mr Randall on the phone straight away. Hello there, sir. My name's Tom Coyle, I'm an enforcement agent. Uh, unfortunately, we've got a High Court writ of control for yourself today. To who, sorry? Yeah. The owner is telling Tommy he's put in an appeal about the case and he thinks he doesn't have to pay. I'll see what's going on. Yeah, and then I'll have a chat with you again. OK. Tommy is confident that the writ is still live and he can take payment, but will give the business a chance to find any paperwork that says otherwise. Whilst they're doing that, He's looking at assets he could take control of. I start taking wrenches down, looking at assets, valuing things up, because I don't know how it's going to go. At this point, we're asked to leave the premises, but Tommy has confirmed that the writ is still live, and he's expecting goods or money to pay Kev Robinson what he's owed. We're getting somewhere now. Uh, Mr Randall's on his way back. It's going to take about an hour and a half. Uh, he's going to be paying £10,000 today for a transfer. Uh, we're signing a controlled goods agreement, which I mentioned earlier, uh, for the balance to be paid at £20,775 on this coming Friday. So it's looking like a bit of a result. We've just got to wait for him to travel back. Uh, it should be about an hour and a half. So I've just got to sit down and wait for him. A payment of £10,000 on the day and the remaining £20,000 by the end of the week is a result. And whilst Tommy waits for the owner and his son, he's getting a good look at the vehicles on the forecourt. They may be company assets. Soon enough, Mr Randall's son Michael is back, but he's not happy to see a camera following this case. Mate, I'm telling you now, unless you've got a warrant or a order to film us, you're not doing it. I'm going to call the police now. You want? Yeah, we will. Okay. 
Inside the building, business owner Mr. Randall is dealing peacefully with Tommy. But as our camera waits on the pavement, Michael Randall returns to the entrance and is demanding to be given any footage shot. Yeah, you've been asked to leave. I now want to take it back. You have no right to film here at all. I'm telling you right now, I'll get the tape or you sort it out with me personally. I'll call the police then. Yeah, so hurry up, mate. After a tense moment, the camera is turned off. And a short while later, Tommy is on his way out. And he's got something for Kev. Uh, took me to the office, made a 5,000 transfer, uh, paid the other 5,000 uh, was cash, which cleared them out in, in the building. Uh, I received them for that, gone to sign a controlled goods agreement, which is for him to pay the remainder of a 20,775 on the Friday. So it gives him two days to get this sorted. His son was very uh, angry about the camera being there today, so he weren't too pleased at all. Uh, asked me to leave a couple of occasions when he came into the, not the office initially. Uh, the father is a lot more calmer, uh, yeah, quite a decent bloke. Uh, yeah, good result today. Before paying out the remainder, Mr. Randall went back to court to appeal. But the judge found in Kev's favour again, and he finally received the remainder of his money. It takes such a weight off your shoulders, and it... party. <laughs> Thanks, Tommy. It's a big up to you, matey. Thank you. Sheriff Kev McNally is out today and chasing payments for his clients along with colleague Mark Newton. They're no strangers to following up court cases over car sales that have gone wrong. We are in Essex and we are going to the Auto Car Exchange, so second-hand car dealers. Um, apparently, according to our notes, we've had a previous case against this guy. And, uh,